We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week we have a bit of a crossover topic. We're going to talk about installing a four-post car lift into your hangar. And you might say, well, why are we going to talk about car lifts? What does that have to do with aircraft? Well, a car lift needs a lot of headspace, room above it, and a large open area on concrete and a lot of you have access to large hangars with maybe a little extra room and to be able to lift your car and work on it or store something underneath it could be a huge benefit and a lot of fun. We're going to take a look at what it takes to purchase one and install one as a kit from scratch and then there's a big surprise at the end because you might think well there's no way I want a car lift in my hangar anchored down to the floor well be sure to watch to the end for what I consider a huge feature benefit to this type of car lift let's take a look the purpose in showing all of this is just to demonstrate how easy it is to install one of these car lifts in your hangar. Basically you're going to pick it up or have it delivered. It comes in one giant wrapped package and the hardest part about installation is really just some of the lifting. However, essentially just two people were able to install this entire lift. So it's not that bad, especially if you have another person or two. But basically after unbanding the package the internal components are carried out one by one. Now basically there are four posts at each corner and you just saw two of them being carried out. And those two large objects on the top and the bottom are the treads that the wheels will run on. So basically four posts and two treads and then you'll see a bunch of cables. These are nice thick steel cables that are actually going to be hidden while the unit works but it actually does the lifting along with a large hydraulic cylinder. So some basic principles in leverage and dollies allows these components to be removed and rolled into the hanger as needed. It's always good to have a third person to help watch, supervise, and attend to any emergencies or difficulties. Here's a great inventory of the components. You should count four posts that will stand vertical and then there are two long treads, the parts that your wheels travel on left and right. One of the treads has all of the cables built inside. Some large cables with pulleys and one large hydraulic piston. Very long one. That's the one that's going to actually raise and lower the vehicles by way of these two sets of steel cables. The assembly work is very simple. Very large nuts and bolts to attach the cables and adjust them. 
then really at this standpoint you need to move the four vertical posts into position at each of the four corners There is a horizontal part that mounts between the two vertical posts at each end. This horizontal beam fits in a groove in the vertical posts and rides up and down, pulled by the cables. And this is what actually lifts each of the treads up and down that raise and lower the car. Here we have it in place at the very bottom and then we're simply going to pull and attach the treads on top of these horizontal members and then we're going to just about be finished with the assembly. Now at each corner is a thick steel cable. These cables run underneath the horizontal member that rides up and down and the ends of the cable attach into a fitting at the very top of each of the four vertical posts. So basically when the hydraulic piston shortens or lengthens these cables that's what pulls the horizontal member at each end up and down to raise and lower the car. Now there's a big nut, an adjustment at the end of each of these cables and that's how we get the system perfectly in level so that all four corners pull at exactly the same level. very simple adjustment at four locations
Here you see a lever and a set of rods. This engages and disengages an automatic locking system. Here you see the pump and the motor that powers the pump in a single unit that is hung onto the side of one of the four corner posts. This provides the hydraulic power by way of a hose to the piston underneath one of the treads. This simply bolts on and then plugs in to your power with a single hose that runs to the hydraulic piston. We are now ready to try it. We power up the motor and the two horizontal members lifting the treads work just fine. There is a little bit of a jerky motion until we get those four cables adjusted just correctly. Those clicks you hear are the automatic locking system to prevent downward travel unless you pull the lever. Success! And of course we have some ramps that attach to the end to finalize the assembly. Now here is the surprise I promised. Notice the caster wheels and their little contraptions attached to each of the four corner posts at the bottom. We are lowering the treads right now, and what's going to happen is the treads are going to contact those contraptions with the caster wheels on them, and through a leveraging force is going to pivot over the caster wheel and actually lift the four posts off the ground by just about an inch. And you might say, what the heck is that good for? Notice the base of those posts is off the floor. What this means is that it is portable. The entire unit, the entire car lift can be moved with a gentle force, an amazingly gentle force. Now, because it's so large, it's nice to have two people. But once you start it moving, it simply rolls out of the way and you can move this to another corner of the room move it to anywhere you want it doesn't take much effort but the idea that something this large and heavy can be portable and mobile makes it absolutely wonderful for a large hangar area to get it out of the way or to reposition it Isn't that something? and once you have positioned it into the location of its desired use, you simply are going to reverse the procedure. You're going to come back and raise the treads, and that will take pressure off of these units, which will leverage the four corners back down to the ground, and then you remove these contraptions. You pull a pin, and it's very easy now to move those out of the way. And there you have it. Something to think about. I would sure like one of those in my hangar. Well, we're going to take this RV behind me on the road a little more often so that our tips can experience the full breadth of the topics and aircraft ideas that are out there in the world. So let's see where the next tip takes us. Until then, back to building.